So these are quite amazing little batteries. They are 105 amp hours, so let's call them 100 amp hours. Um, but that is 100 uh, usable power. So a lead acid 105 or 100 amp hour is going to give you at best 50%, so 50 amp hours. Uh, quite a lot of uh, recent studies have shown that lead acid, uh, the amount that you should actually use is close to 40%. So if that is correct, then you know, 205 amp hour lead acids still doesn't give you as much as this does. And that would weigh, two of those would weigh approximately 45, 50 kilograms, so quite heavy. Uh, whereas this will give you 100 amp hours of usable, and if you wanted to stretch it, 105 amp hours of usable, usable power. And uh, so we're gonna take you through the whole build process of uh, how we built this thing. This is an experimental, well, this is a prototype that we're building just to see how feasible it is to build these into these uh, dinky little cases. And uh, this would fit, you know, for, for people who are running one or two lead acid batteries, this is a very good option to, to change over to, uh, to give you a lot of usable power for a very little bit of weight. So we started out in our usual way of clamping the cells. Uh, so we put a ply end on each end of the cells and then clamp them. So it's important to note here, we're not clamping them really um, tightly here, basically just taking up the slack and uh, getting a nice little bit of compression onto the cells so that we can then put the fiber tape on. Fiber tape is really what's gonna do the work here. Um, so the ply ends is just a flat surface that goes on the outside of the battery pack and the fiber tape um, doesn't have much, if any, give uh, when the cells do um, uh, expand and, and contract as they are charged and discharged. Um, so we just go and do multiple layers here, cut it, keep it nice and neat, um, and then we usually will do the bottom, and I think we will do a middle uh, line, and then we'll take the clamps off. Yeah, so we go with a bigger uh, reel of tape <coughs> and uh, get that taped up nicely. Then did uh, some mock tests just to see. So the cases that we have for these battery cells are a little bit bigger uh, than we actually need. And so um, we will work around that with some spaces and things like that. So this is obviously just a prototype for now. Uh, got the BMS and sampled that, had to cut a bit of a groove in the top of the ply end to make space for the wires for the BMS. Then just laid the pack on its side and uh, taped the BMS on, so we were good to go with that. Um, looking pretty good, we were pretty pleased with these daily BMSs. Um, some people really dislike them, but on the whole, they work pretty well for us. We've used loads of them and had great performance. Um, terminated all of the balance leads with six more lugs. We like these lugs that have the heat shrink on them and uh, then connected everything up. Uh, we also cut the balance leads a bit shorter just to keep things neat. Um, so some people say that you should have your balance leads um, all the same length. To be honest, uh, because they're not under load, there's not really voltage drop on them, uh, it really makes no difference, especially if you're talking about cutting just a few couple of inches or a small amount. We had to extend a couple of them actually um, just because it didn't quite reach from the bottom of the BMS to the end of the cell. So these DALI 100 amp BMSs come with fairly short balance leads. So uh, just bear in mind that you may have to extend them as we did here. So just terminated them and then uh, started measuring out for the main red wire. So we quite like uh, this battery case in that the positive and the negative are on either ends of the case, which um, is quite nice just in terms of keeping them apart. You don't have risk of shorts and stuff like that on the two terminals. Um, made the red wire that would be going to the red terminal on the case lid and put that in. That's pretty much the battery built and ready to turn the BMS on. Uh, put it back in the case to then connect everything up and measure things. Um, then just got some of this foam that we get with all of the cells that we buy. We're going to be using that just for this prototype, uh, just to test things and see how we go with it. So just stuffed some of that in so the cells are kept nice and secure. So we've finished the basic build. Uh, as you've seen, we've put uh, everything together. We've taped it together with some experimental ply-ins, put, put it into this case with some padding, just 
trying it out, uh, put all the balance leads on. So in theory, uh, this isn't uh, switched on yet. We need, still need to switch the BMS on and we're going to uh, take a multimeter. So let's get this down to check. It should, should read somewhere around three or four volts at this stage in the multimeter, uh, 8.4. So the, the BMS hasn't turned on yet, so it's, it's unpredictable, but let's just leave that on there. And the BMS has this Bluetooth dongle with a tiny micro switch that is then used to turn it on. So we've now come up to 14.22. So that's where they finished off with the top balancing and it's totally steady on 14.22. So as a battery, this actually does work. So let's uh, get this thing finally assembled, get all the final assembly stuff on. Radio. We've um, drilled this hole for the Bluetooth dongle. We're going to put the Bluetooth dongle outside. Some some will leave it inside the case, but it it has this wake up switch that you can uh, use. The Bluetooth goes to sleep if it's not used for a length of time, just to um, to save power so that you don't flatten your battery out. So let's um, try and get this through the hole of the grommet first. And then this comes through here. This is usually the, one of the most difficult parts is to get this little grommet in here. And actually one of the best tools to do it would be one of the old um, Swiss Army knife blades with these, these um, screwdriver blades are quite blunt so that it don't cut into the grommet. Okay, that's nice and fairly neatly on. Let's tidy it up on this side. There we are. So we'll be able to uh, tie this on once we get the lid down. But in the meantime, let's tighten up these two terminals. Okay, so we then just uh, bolted the wires onto the battery lid. So this is pretty straightforward. Uh, just the black from the BMS onto the black terminal on the case lid and the red from the outside red uh, terminal on the battery cells uh, to the red terminal on the case lid. Fairly straightforward and just hand tightened them for this prototype. We then uh, connected the Bluetooth module which obviously has the on switch to turn the BMS on. It has a little micro switch on the Bluetooth module and we like to use these little sticky circles, uh, like a 3M type sticky uh, to stick the Bluetooth module. This the terminal is pushing into the uh, padding just a little bit, which is not bad. Actually not a bad thing at all. But in future we might use shallow and bolts here. In fact, I might change this over for a slightly shallower bolt. That's it, nice and snug. It'll be held down by, we'll actually glue this lid on. Let's just see in the meantime. Double check, 14.22 or 21. And final, let's wait, see how heavy this is. 10 and a half kilograms. That is great. So folks, thanks for uh, watching this. This is our 105 amp hour, uh, so I guess we're gonna call it an Ops 100 battery. This was the prototype build uh, to see just how we would build it uh, to fit into these uh, small cases. Uh, these are EVE cells, uh, very good quality. We've capacity tested them. 
the uh, every cell has met the capacity or exceeded it. Well, every cell has exceeded the capacity, and um, uh, quite a quite a nice little battery, a uh, nice strap to carry it with. Uh, all that remains now for this one would be to glue it together, glue the lid down so that uh, it can take the weight. It's only 10 and a half kilograms, so a, a very good weight. So if if uh, somebody was to, well, well, if somebody had a single 105 amp hour uh, lead acid battery, this would give them double the capacity for something that is uh, less than half the weight. And so for somebody that has two lead acids, this would provide them with a little bit more uh, power than what they are currently enjoying, and uh, but f at a fraction of the weight. So 10 and a half versus roughly 50 kilograms, 45, 50 kilograms for the two uh, lead acid batteries. So this is, this is gonna be a, a really good deal. Uh, it's got a, a Bluetooth dongle. We've put it externally. We could have left it inside, but then it's got to communicate through the battery case and then through the distance of your van. So this is, we think, is better if it's because quite often batteries are in a locker or something like that, and uh, so we wanted this dongle to be uh, available. And also the Bluetooth goes to sleep to preserve power, and it's got a little micro switch that you can wake it up with. Of course, if you start discharging or charging, the Bluetooth wakes up automatically. So although the Bluetooth goes to sleep, the BMS inside here doesn't actually ever go to sleep. It will, in theory, never turn off. It'll stay on forever and ever. And these cells should give you roughly three and a half, four thousand cycles. So you're looking at this battery lasting at least 10 years, at least. But for a lot of people, you could leave this in your will and uh, your kids will still get, you know, a, a, another five or 10 years out of, out of it or, or even more. So. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in the next episode.